oh my god what another really exciting game and con like controversial and crazy and all sorts of stuff going on like what what just happened it's a bit like coming out of a whirlwind doesn't it I feel like you've been in a bit of a washing machine um so poor Dan Ryan three of his starting seven down in one game Keenan um early on and then um Bollum off in the second quarter and then Tony goes down as well and it just it was just crazy they were dropping like flies and you just you feel for him but the flip side of that is the people that came on did such an excellent job I mean you had um Sienna Rushton come on in the shooting position and just you know what while I went off and I was like oh maybe this is it now but she came on and she bossed it I mean, a different style slightly, don't get me wrong, obviously two completely different players, um, but it just, she just made it work. She was holding strong, she was getting ball, and she was playing against Raz Quashi. I mean, don't get me wrong, Raz got to got her hands to ball, got some turnovers, but oh my goodness, Sienna Rushton just, just stood up to the pressure. And then Paige Kindred coming on at goalkeeper was actually a really positive move. She turned quite a few ball, went on flies, um, was fearless, her and Asola working together, I mean... They were just hunting. It's really exciting when defenders hunt. We love it. And let's face it, you've got to, haven't you? When you're up against Corbin, um, Kadeen Corbin, who, let's face it, can run at the speed of a rocket. She's just so fast. It's unbelievable. Um, so you, you're not going to match her. She's going to lose you one-on-one -on, -one on a baseline quite easy. So you have to start thinking about how you're going to play this tactically. Clark coming on for um, Mavericks as well. Oh my God, I love Brittany Clark. She can just get ball. She holds her space. The ball comes in. Again, um, Rhinos had to hunt early, which is what they did. So let's break it down quarter by quarter. So the first quarter was quite tight. It ended up Mavs 11, Rhinos 10. Rhinos part some catching was a little bit dodgy, not going to lie, right to start off with. Um, they were just trying to get their range in, but then they started to ping those balls over to well and she started to hold her space really well. To start off with, she was getting pinned on that baseline by Raz Quashi, and Raz was doing a really good job. Um, the defence of Rhino in the in the Mavericks goal third was really, really strong, putting lots of pressure on, but Mavs were so patient, just moving the ball around. Um, I think sometimes a little bit too patient. As the game got on, they gave a lot of two-second balls and three-second balls, and not three-second balls to create something. It was three-second balls, we'll go to lateral or we'll go back because we don't know where to go forward. When Mavericks played really well was when they were on the move. When you see the speed of um, Sasha Corbin and Kadeen Corbin linking up, and then later on, Bayless as well, coming into that link, um, they just ping it down. And when they ping it down quickly, it works. Because they're not pinging it down to static players, they're pinging it down moving into space. And it was really, really good. Um, Mavs struggled to start off with on phase one of the centre pass. The defence of Rhinos on that phase one centre pass was really, really strong. And really nice to see. So yeah, 10-11. Rhinos were transitioning through court really quickly especially in that first quarter quarter two there was better pressure by Mavs on the Rhino centre pass which was good to see Rhinos, uh, Mavs were playing the middle more in that attacking end so stopping breaking through that zone a little bit that Rhinos were putting on and they, they were just starting to, to function a bit better under that pressure the connection between Brias and um, Rhea Dixon and Wellham was really 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 good and was just building which is why it was so um, like so catastrophic almost for people watching when Wellham went off. But like I say, they just built that connection again with Rushton coming on and Rushton did a really good job. Both teams were a bit rushed at times in the second quarter, a bit of catalogue of errors. And I know I said um, Mavericks play well when they play fast, but when they play fast straight to goal, you know, that direct route, turnover to goal. Sometimes when they were a little bit rushed um, and it was a bit like a, a, a pressure cooker. It was getting hotter and hotter and hotter and then it would bubble over. And we had a couple of moments where it was a bit like netball ping pong, just going back and forth. But the second quarter, you know, again, exactly the same score as the first quarter. 10 for Rhinos, 11 for Mavs. So very consistent, both teams. Possibly a bit low scoring, but that was because of the, the passing errors and the, the little bit of netball ping pong that we had. Just... Um, those things I think will slow the iron out throughout the season, but it's something they really need to focus on and cut out because if you cut out even half of those errors, some of these teams are going to start to walk through. So it's the teams that are going to be able to make those connections and stop those little errors. Quarter three. Oh my God, three turnovers in the first two minutes. It was carnage, absolute carnage. That way, this way, that way. I thought, God, if I was the centre in this game, I'd be dead. <laughs> but again, it's just... It's just those little errors. But it's also the, the players, the defensive players that were getting the turnovers were sat back, reading the play and running on it. And it's you've just got to be a bit more savvy um, 
some of the passes that were coming through, just seeing that offline defender, or even as the attacker being able to drive in front of that offline defender so they can't actually intercept the ball. We see a Serena Guthrie, for instance, do this really well. As she's coming through the court, she'll drive on an angle through the court and she almost turns her back on those defenders so they can't get the ball. They have to come through her. Admittedly, sometimes they do try and come through her, but... That's how they've got to work through the court to stop those offline defenders coming through and taking it. If you're running in a straight line, it's a lot easier for a defender to come through. And they're the ones that went astray. Um, Clark and Corbin worked really well. This is where we said what happened is Clark came on at goal shoot, Corbin went to goal attack and it was beautiful. It almost put a little bit of a rocket in proceedings. But again, the scoreline started swinging back and forth a little bit. 11 all in that quarter. So Mavs went into the fourth, leading 33-31. Um... Obviously, like I say, Tona had gone off um, quarter four, just errors. Errors were causing a problem for Rhinos to start off with. A break in, passing into arms, held ball. Um, the same the other side, or they don't think they had a break in, but again, another held ball. A couple of really key interceptions. So all throughout the game, we saw Vicky Asola oh, come out with some awesome turnover. Just running on ball again. You can't get in a straight line run with Vicky Asola. She's so quick through the court. She's unassuming. I don't think you realise how far she is until you see her on a one-on-one -on -one battle. And as she's going, she takes line of ball and she tends to always come out with it. So, again, just some errors in that respect. Paige Kindred, again, sitting back, looking at stuff, taking ball out of air. Joe Tripp came out with a good one, although was pulled for intentional contact. But, mm, you know... It looked like a good inception. I'm not on the side of the court, so I can't see from that distance. And we have a different angle at, on the TV, right? But all that happened on this quarter was ebbed and flowed. And then at the end, Mavs just chipped away. And they ended up 10-8 that quarter. So Leeds Rhino has only got eight. Mavs got 10. So Mavs were fairly consistent in their scoring. A little bit low from what I would have liked to see. But again, just the errors that they need to cut out. Leeds Rhino's last quarter... Eight isn't good enough for them. It needs to be higher. And that's where it, it fell down. They were in the game up until sort of right towards the end. And you know what? If we had another quarter, I wouldn't be surprised if they'd come back again, which is all credit to them considering what was going on in terms of their players and, and having to take people off. And it just shows that they've got a squad depth to do it. Player of the match went to Rhea Dixon. Well-deserved in my opinion. Very quickly. And I'm not going to spend too much time on it because... um. It's probably a bit controversial and I don't want to get in trouble. But right at the beginning of the, um, before the game started, um, Dan Ryan was talking about embracing the challenge. You know, they didn't feel like they were challenged in their last match. They didn't feel like they were put under pressure. And he said, now he's step they're stepping up to a quality side to see what happened. Um, Camilla Buchanan said again, almost the same thing, that now they were stepping up to actually a, a challenge and now they were going to be tested. Um, and Kat Ratt and Fala spoke about the, the tiredness, the fatigue, um, well, she was questioned about it and she said, you know, it is what it is. We looked at the um, the lineup of, not the lineup, the list, the, uh, you know, where everything is, order of play, when they get to play. And she said, you know, it is what it is. We knew we were coming up against it. Um, there's, you know, there's not much else we can do. We're grateful to be playing. Rah, 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 rah. At the end of the game, Kat Ratnapala did come on and say in her post-match interview, and I paraphrase, um, that she was just grateful to have 12 players leaving. Um, and then when questioned on whether she felt for Dan Ryan, um, she commented about the fact that, she, of course, you always feel sorry for coaches in that position, but, um, but also, you know... I can't remember quite how she said it, but basically alluded to the fact that it was their style of play that caused those injuries. And I was like, oh, and no one else is mentioning it. Is it just me? Oh my goodness. Like I absolutely rate Kanna at Nepal. She makes, she, you know, fantastic coach made some really key decisions in there, you know, gets players going back on and changing up what they're doing and adapting and makes them play to the squad and how she needs them to play. Came out with a win. Fabulous. But, oh, controversial comment at the end. Um, as opposed to Rhea Dixon, who is questioned about her when she's playing the match and she just smiles and says, you know, how grateful she is to be playing netball. Anyway, I will leave it on that controversial note. We now have, like, what, five days off? maybe four and then some more netball next weekend netball is keep tuning in because it's really important you get behind netball at this point in time the more people that are tuning in and watching the more they are going to put on the tv for us in the future so come on rise as one get yourselves watching um, and have a great week